I would like to now uh, present to you Mr. Samir Sarif. Sales and marketing. I think uh, uh, Dr. Viraj talked about uh, you know this selling uh, book selling, but we will really uh, dive a little bit on how we actually sell uh, digital content. And then finally, I'll talk about e-delivery, uh, the, uh, the challenges and, and what you would need as a publisher to actually deliver your content uh, online. Just a quick background: myself, uh, entrepreneur, started a couple of tech companies. This is uh, one of my tech companies that I've started. Um, and I've, uh, you know, uh, love building companies, um, love sports. Uh, and I've actually, you know, uh, started Impulses about 15 years ago. And, uh, and it's been a phenomenal ride. Um, and if you think about when the whole uh, internet and technology boom happened, it has been about 15 years. And it's been a real blessing and pleasure for me to actually speak at different events. I mean, I've, Spoken at all the major uh, book events, the Frankfurt Book Fair, uh, the London Book Fair, uh, Digital Book World in New York, um, Abu Dhabi Book Fair, um, we've been uh, speaking in South America, the Columbia Book Fair. But what I've seen, and I'm here, it's the first time I'm speaking at Kuala Lumpur, and it's, uh, you know, throughout these 15 years, I've seen transformation happen, and the challenges that everyone has faced in actually, uh, you know, addressing the whole uh, side of digital. There was at one point in, uh, you know, as this whole thing happened early on, there was a lot of, uh, uh, um, you know, a fright within a lot of publishers thinking that print would disappear and E would take over. But as it all has evolved and it has matured, I think what we've seen from both earlier speakers is to understand content is, fine, is king. And if you guys focus on content and understand your content well, that's what will make you successful. But at the same time, understand all the different new ways to actually deliver content to your market. We've heard a lot today about digital, social media, ebooks, all of that. There's no one thing that's right. Content is right. So I will now dive into how to actually help kind of figure that out. So we are a 15-year-old company, very much focused on publishing and education. We are 300 plus people in, based out of New York, and uh, most of our engineering is done in uh, you know, the other Silicon Valley of the world, in Bangalore, India. Uh, we have offices in London and uh, all around the US. Um, really uh, focused on uh, content delivery and helping publishers understand their content and figuring out how to actually transform their content into this new digital world. Um, our main product is a product called iPublish Central. We have hundreds of publishers on this platform, allowing them to uh, touch millions of consumers across the world. Um, and we actually work with some of the biggest brands around the world. So we have billion dollar companies like McGraw-Hill, Elsevier Science, to small publishers like Hong Kong University Press to uh, um, MIT Press. So we actually work with publishers across you know, North America, South America, Middle East, Europe, and uh, the Far East. What's been a real amazing journey for us as, as Impulses is that 
we, you know, are sitting at the C level or at an executive level for each of these publishers and trying to understand what their challenges are in trying to figure out how to deliver their value to their end customer. So over these last 15 years, we've come across all types of challenges and we've addressed those problems and we've learned. And we've taken that learning and put it into our products, our platform. And that's our real value here. And I will actually share quite a bit of this with you uh, in today's presentation. So the first piece of this whole digital uh, transformation that we need to really talk about is from the beginning, how you actually produce your content. Um, and that's a, a key element because first thing, I mean, as you are you know, traditionally been publishing, there are certain cultural things that you have done and processes that you have followed. So we'll actually you know, walk through how this change is happening and how you can leverage uh, you know, digital in, uh, in actually the whole production uh, workflow. So if you look at a traditional publisher um, in terms of production of their um, printed book, you would actually see you know, the manuscript uh, being uh, created by the author, which uh, Chu talked about, and then the editorial team actually editing it and uh, formatting it and uh, creating the table of contents. And post that, then the pro uh, that uh, manuscript would actually go to the compositor to actually create the print InDesign file, which would then go to the printer. Um, but at, this, at that point, uh, the publisher would start thinking about digital. So traditionally, uh, you know, you have this first process of thinking about print first, and then starting to think about, hey, I need to create some digital uh, ancillary. So it is a little bit more inefficient, and you start thinking about some uh, developing some ancillaries. Then you start creating the XML for those digital products and creating multimedia products around that, and then creating the ebook uh, formats, the PDFs, the EPUB files, and then actually delivering that. So this is how, you know, so if you look at it, traditionally if you were, you, and I think most Malaysian publishers are probably just print centric. What we've seen over in the European and the, uh, the American markets is this transformation over the last 10 years where they were going this way, uh, where they would you know, create the printed product first and then think digital second and then come, uh, and, come and build those uh, digital ancillaries. It's a slightly inefficient. What they've transformed themselves is to think about uh, print and digital combined. And what we're seeing is as you create the manuscript, you're actually uh, creating the, uh, you know, the, the file and actually creating the XML file that would be XML first, that would actually uh, you know, uh, create both the print as well as the digital file, and create both the you know, InDesign file for the print side, as well as all the ancillaries, and put all the right tagging and all the uh, different elements to create the digital products. And together, as you go print first, you also have digital products coming at the same time. This is much more efficient, and you can get a lot more value in terms of uh, productions. So you have a single source, which is the content, when then you have common XMLs to create uh, both print as well as digital uh, products, and then you actually deliver those products to the market. There's a lot of, you know, so if you look at your production, there's a lot of different <coughs> things that you can actually do to bring down costs of production. And there's, and you know, the, the question that a lot of uh, uh, publishers have is that digital products or digital development is expensive. But if you actually re-look re at your production workflow, you can actually bring down your overall pr uh, production costs for both print as well as uh, digital. Uh, so there's a lot of automation that can happen, and we've helped quite a few companies across the world do this automation in their production workflow to actually build efficient digital products. So building ebooks is not an expensive task. So if you actually have <coughs> printed uh, books, we can actually automate a lot of your ebook production 
so that delivering ebooks to the PDF uh, EPUB files is uh, quite efficient. So the next thing that you and uh, Shaw talked about it uh, was actually enriching your content. Uh, ebooks is not the only product that you can actually create. Ebooks is just one type type of product. And I think uh, Dr. Rusaj talked about you know test prep and all of these other different types of products that's being you know very popular in today's market. And there is different ways to actually enhance your uh, digital, uh, digital <coughs> products. First is just interactivity, putting uh, you know different types of uh, um, uh, quizzes and things like that into uh, your uh, ebook uh, solution. Then really creating a product that's discoverable. That means you know uh, tagging the right content, allowing uh, content to be more discoverable by the end user, and finally creating better experiences for that content. Understand if it is a testing product, how do you actually make the product a lot more effective for that student to actually uh, help them pass those tests uh, better. So actually creating better experiences. So some of these examples are figure labeling. I mean, we've done, we've taken a, a regular nursing book that actually teaches a nurse how to actually you know, uh, cater to a particular case, and we've built full simulations for some of the big uh, uh, medical publishers. And this is taking the content that was in the book, that was all in words, and creating a full-blown simulation where that student actually engages in a patient interaction virtually through a simulation where you can actually uh, engage with that patient and give that patient medication, understand how he actually you know, responds to that medication, and actually uh, understand how to deliver care to that patient. So it moves quite uh, a bit away from just saying, hey, it's just transforming a book to an ebook. We've now taken that content and created you know, visual interactive simulation uh, products to enable the customer, which is a student, to learn. Because that publisher, again, is teaching that student how to deliver better patient care. It's not delivering just books. So we've actually taken technology and created a lot better form of content to enable them to do that. Um, so there's a whole load of other products, ancillary products, supplementary products, that you can actually build, um, and actually build quite efficiently. Um, and then the other thing that we've done is that most of these educational publishers, most of these uh, uh, you know, children's publishers are educational companies. And these books are literally teaching these students and kids how to learn, or the professional how to you know, learn about a particular topic. So we've actually done a lot of work helping all of these publishers transform these books into courseware. So with that, you know, to, in to creating online courses around that book. So for that, you need instructional designers, you need content enrichment, and you need to actually build a certain uh, components and a learning management system to create uh, courseware development. So uh, just a quick case <coughs> study, uh, Walters Clore, they, they were a traditional uh, medical publisher. They're one of the largest medical publishers. They produced uh, 1,500 books uh, a year. We've actually helped them act, uh, create ancillaries for all of these books. It might seem a lot uh, of work, but what we've done is create tools and uh, workflows to enable them to efficiently deliver with these uh, the printed book ancillary products like PowerPoints, test engines, and uh, uh, slideshows to actually deliver not only books, but a whole slew of digital products for them. Um, another uh, customer is Royal College of Nursing. They used to just produce uh, journals, you know, um, and they used to only print the journals. Well, and uh, they needed professional development credits to be delivered, and uh, what we created was whole, whole courses around, uh, you know, journal articles. So we took the journal article that was, you know, 20 pages, and we created a full-blown course around that journal article. And now they have not only a journal article, but also uh, an online course for that journal article to help that 
for this for this particular case, that a medical practitioner to get uh, continued medical education credits uh, for their uh, the journal article that they uh, read during, during the course. So they really understood their content. They really created new products around their content and created multiple revenue streams for their uh, for their content. So, on this, uh, so that's all really on the production side. A lot of work uh, to actually create, you know, great uh, content products across different types of uh, uh, types of product categories, and not just uh, a printed book or an ebook, ancillaries, a quiz, quiz banks, simulations, courseware, things like that. On the sales and market, once you create this, how do you actually sell? Um, and how do you sell a book? There's different types of uh, you know, uh, uh, offerings that you can do. And what you need to do as a publisher is have the capability to actually enable yourself to actually uh, create these kind of business models. Um, so you, know, you need some of these kind of infrastructure. And I'll talk about how to create that infrastructure really, really cost effectively. It doesn't have to cost that much money to actually create this to enable uh, uh, this relationships and this kind of different models. The first type is directly connecting to your end user. Dr. Wiesel has talked about how you know Facebook has their customers and it's not really your customers. How do you, as a publisher, start to build a direct relationship with your customer and start directly selling your content? So there's different ways. There's the um, you know, the rentals where you can actually uh, uh, rent uh, books for a few hours or for a few days or uh, a, a few weeks. There is the, you know, chapter sales where you can cut the books up into different uh, compo uh, chapters and sell chapters. You can do print and ebook bundles. Uh, what most publishers do to get into the e-side is actually sell the printed book and give the ebook for free to get people used to the whole, uh, the whole E side. So you could have a scratch up code with the printer. So let's say you're, uh, you know, you're selling a book. You know? That book is in a bookstore. The book now is sold through the bookstore. You don't know him or her you know, because that uh, person is in some other city or in some other world. But imagine if you could actually have a scratch up code for that as a free ebook, and that person comes back to your website, puts the code in, gets a free ebook, at that point you have a direct connection to that end user and you can start marketing to that end user. So there's different business models that you can actually engage with, which is very, very important, directly to the end customer. The other important element for publishers and a big chunk for our uh, customers, especially the educational and professional publishers, is institutional selling. Selling into schools, selling into uh, universities, selling into libraries. So with that, you need certain uh, types of uh, functionality so that you can sell subscriptions, you can sell site accesses, you can do lending, so you can have bookshelves and all of that. Um, and that is a key element that you need. And finally, as you create these products, and uh, like what Dr. Rizal is saying, market, you know, the social media uh, kind of marketing that you need to promote your content, to actually we talked about uh, all the promotion of social media that's really important. That's a key element for you as a publisher to actually enable yourselves to actually have that expertise. And if it's not expertise that you have in-house, there are partners that can help you, uh, you know, actually do this kind of uh, marketing. But there's a whole bunch of things that you do to actually optimize uh, your content for SEO and uh, the different that uh, enable you to actually get your content to be discovered across the web, be it in the Facebooks and the LinkedIn's of the world, or through the Google uh, Google uh, search results and all of that. Um, so that's uh, from the social media marketing, from the institutional side, really working either by your, with yourselves or with partners to help you sell into uh, libraries uh, across the, uh, the world, uh, really creating the right business model for the libraries, you know, be it uh, subscription or perpetual or one-off access, creating the right collections, creating a database of uh, institutional customers and actually marketing uh, to them. Um, so just to give a quick uh, you know, case study, 
Uh, one of our customers is a uh, really big children's brand, Sesame Street. So we actually uh, created their uh, you know, e-book uh, platform. Um, and uh, you know, we actually uh, uh, are helping them um, sell their content across the, the world. And they've successfully uh, you know, uh, created a whole uh, con you know, uh, product line here. Uh, two different markets that they attack. One was direct to you know, end consumers across the world. And we've done it in multiple ways. One is creating newsletters. Again, uh, as they build uh, customers, continuously engaging with that customer on a month-to-month -month basis, talking about new books coming out on their platform, talking about you know, certain subjects within the, uh, within the books that they have. So engaging. Engaging with Google to do social, uh, social, you know, uh, AdWords to get customers to come in and buy. Engaging with uh, on Facebook and creating followers. Engaging with Instagram and creating followers. Um, and really uh, creating a, a, a site that has stickiness and can they are creating a database of customers that actually uh, don't buy it outright. They buy it as, as a monthly subscription at a you know it's as much as a dollar ninety nine to three dollars uh, a month uh, that they can buy in three months, six months, twelve month uh, packages. We also started selling this uh, the content into libraries across the world, um, and we've uh, you know uh, sold it to, at state in the U.S. at state levels, at uh, county levels, and all of that. So they successfully used uh, both the B2C market and B2B market to create uh, pretty de uh, you know, sophisticated revenues that you know, recur every, uh, every year for themselves. And finally, uh, you know, we uh, talk about how do you actually deliver uh, your uh, content uh, and what do you need to actually, uh, uh, the infrastructure and the software. There's a, you know, there's the question of do you as a publisher need your own content delivery infrastructure? It really depends on what kind of publisher you are. If you are a, you know, a simple trade book publisher creating fiction books, it, you know, is it a must? Probably not. But if you are a school publisher or an educational publisher or a professional publisher or a, a niche publisher in particular niche categories, the, the need to have some infrastructure and software so that you can start building relationships with your end customer is very, very important. There's multiple reasons for why it's important. One is that, you know, that, that direct connection. That's <coughs> Two is, like I said, content is king. And content is not just about printed books anymore. Printed books is one element. Content is you know, ebooks, it is videos, it is courses, it is, you know, community. There's a whole bunch of things that you can create based on what you as a publisher are good at. And we've seen these transformations. If you think about these major publishers like a Pearson or an Elsevier or Walter Stewart, Pearson doesn't call themselves a publisher anymore. Pearson's, Pearson calls themselves an education company. Uh, Elsevier don't call themselves a book publisher anymore. They are a point of care healthcare delivery company. So you need to understand what kind of company you are. Not a publisher, what kind of content that are you engaged to, and how your customers are actually uh, consuming that content, and build content around that. And content can fall in all kinds of formats. But having infrastructure is really, really important. And the most amazing thing in today's world is that this infrastructure and software is not expensive. There are companies like us that actually can deliver this infrastructure and tremendous value at a very, very cost-effective manner. So what's really important for you to actually have for, in terms of software for delivery? First thing is a content uh, store a management system to actually hold this content. Second is content is you know your uh, key. So making sure that there is digital rights management to actually protect your content so that it doesn't get stolen or uh, pirated. Third is actually a reader 
that uh, you know when I say a reader, uh, a delivery reader that can you know deliver your content across all types of uh, devices and uh, uh, platforms. And finally, you know, uh, tools to help you analyze how people are engaging with your content. It's actually uh, phenomenal. So if you have these things, you will have robust infrastructure, and these are available out in the market. So as you want to build, you want to build a portal, either you currently have an e-commerce site, but if you want to now enable that e-commerce site or your website to actually deliver e-content, you need uh, to you know, deliver PDFs, you need, so you can actually connect your current website with the existing end user portal where you can have a bookshelf for the content and all of that. You need to have you know, a good reader for that content, the reader must be able to actually deliver PDF content, EPUB content, EPUB free content. Um, the reader must have you know, both offline and online access, and the reader must have DRM so that it is protected. Um, you need to also have you know, systems and controls to actually uh, you know, manage your content. First is user, user management. How do you actually give access to individual uh, users as they come into the uh, segment? How do you give access, uh, control to all the different, if you're selling into libraries and institutions, how do you actually uh, you know, give them access and give them the, 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 the rights based on how you sell that content? You need to manage all your digital products on your uh, portal. You know. Uh, as you add new products into the into your portal, how do you manage that? The pricing, the, if you want to change content, all of that, that's really important. You need to now, then have an analytics engine to actually uh, under, understand how people are you know, coming into you, uh, to your website. So uh, the admin uh, feature is uh, very, very important. But what we also need to make sure is make sure that your content is available where people are today, which is, you know, people are more and more on their mobile devices. So making sure you're delivering content, both uh, either through web portals that are responsive, or through offline app, uh, apps that you can download into your phone and actually consume content. So having a mobile strategy really, really key for your delivery of uh, content. Um, so here you see, you know, a website that is both on, uh, you know, a normal desktop, and as you now go to the same website onto your, uh, your, on your mobile device, it actually responds to the device and actually delivers your content, reformats content, and actually delivers into the device. Or you have apps that can actually be on the uh, end users' uh, uh, tablet or phone devices and making sure that it is across Android, iOS, or any of those devices. And there's, uh, you know, having this uh, infrastructure will just enable you to actually, <coughs> actually create better ideas and better uh, uh, ways to create better products for your end customer. Um, we've talked about DRM, but uh, really uh, making sure that you have the right DRM protection uh, so that you can avoid piracy uh, of, of, of your content. So uh, we talked. Uh, we've talked about analytics. It's really. I mean, it's. Uh, the, we've seen our publishers where they are selling content. I mean, I mean we we can understand how people are using content. Um, so we have publishers that you know they're in the university market. They can actually uh, understand how different universities are using their book content differently so that they can now tell their salespeople that in the University of Texas, you know, the, these books are being used uh, uh, continually, uh, quite a bit, but in the same university, in, in similar universities uh, across the state, it's not being used, and that data the salesperson can actually use to actually sell more. Or from an editorial perspective, we can, uh, they can use an analytics to understand for the editorial team that has actually created that book, they can understand what pages 
that the consumers have actually read, or which sections. So in a book of 20 chapters, if chapter one and chapter five have been read the most in chapter three and chapter seven, eight, nine, hasn't that even used, maybe the next edition, they can actually start writing more on chapter one and five. So all this data is available. If you have this, these tools, it gives you intelligence, and that intelligence makes you smarter as a publisher to create better products to create uh, and get, deliver better uh, products to your uh, and, and customer. So just a quick uh, a couple of case studies, and I think you know, as a you know publisher in Malaysia with amazing content, right? The internet allows you to you know make you market the world, right? And here's an example, I mean, it's a big publisher. We've done this with across smaller publishers. We've en enabled an Elsevier science to actually create global strategy, but at a local level, right? We've enabled them to you know, have you know, different products, uh, products in different markets. So they have eBooks that are sold in Germany, in German, the same products in Portugal, in Portuguese and the same products in China and Chinese. And they've enabled each of their sales teams across each of these regions to actually sell their eBooks at a local level and personalize it at a local level. So you might be a publisher in Malaysia that gives, you know, has distributors across the world. You could enable those distributors to actually, uh, you know, Create a, you know, your digital products and enable that distributor to sell the uh, products uh, locally in those in that distributor's market, or vice versa. You might be a publisher that gets rights for certain books for the local Malaysian or Thai or the, those markets, and you want to actually tell that publisher, hey, I would like to also deliver digital products. All you need to do is have that infrastructure to tell that publisher, hey. I have the infrastructure. Give me the ebooks. I will actually deliver it to these markets. And there are, I mean, our system can do it. There are other systems that can do it. So, but the idea here is, you know, think globally. The internet is a global phenomenon, and you can actually reach customers and the, you know, the Malaysian diaspora across the world. And having this infrastructure will enable you to actually go across the world. Uh, across markets. Another uh, case study is uh, Learner Publishing. Again, children's publishing. They uh, created, you know, they've been traditional children publisher. They created rich books around their traditional print books. Added interactivity, added voiceover, add, added a, a few uh, games, games within the book and created not only a printed book that they sold to the market, but created digital uh, and you know, ancillary products with the printed book. And how they started and how they successfully uh, created a, a digital platform is initially seven or eight years ago when they started, they gave the digital products away for free with the printed products. They established their, you know, network into their traditional printed market. And when they first started uh, the ebooks, it wasn't, they didn't spend you know, money around richness. And it was a simple PDF EPUB file that went along with the printed book. But as they, their customers got a taste of their uh, E, and as their students in the libraries of these schools started getting a taste, they started increasing the price of their ebooks. So from free, they started putting print uh, and free ebook, and they started print and ebooks at 10 cents to the dollar of the print book. So eventually, they still have their print book, but they also have a new revenue stream for e. And they've done it smartly, and they've innovated. But the other thing is they've also started building a direct relationship with each of those students and they can get data back of what they're, how they're doing and to create more innovation. So it, it is, you know, it's a journey and the journey is a long journey. It's 
Uh, but it is, you know, as I've traveled my journey 15 years here in publishing and as publishing has been transformed, what I see are the publishers that take a little bit of risk. They don't have to do, you know, tremendous risk, but get their uh, feet, uh, you know, toes wet with just keeps creating basic infrastructure and then slowly learning to supplement some of their print with E. And then, you know, as they learn, keep innovating with, uh, you know, strategic partners, they are expanding. And you see print declining, but it's not declining. They are, you know, you know re uh, countering that decline with some E. But they're transforming themselves as a company from being a publisher to either an education company or to a, a media company or to a care company. And you will understand that as you get these new products. So the question is, you know, where are you with your digital strategy? Right? And we as a company have gone through you know, so many different markets, be it the US market, be it the English market, or the German market, or the South American market, over the last 15 years. And we've seen this transformation. You know, at the beginning in 2005, 2006, there was a real fright of saying, hey, E is going to take over. But that's changed. E is not going to take over. Print is really, really strong. But I think what everyone has said in today's spe uh, speech is, Content is king. You need to understand your subject. You need to understand your customer. And you need to understand technology. You don't have to understand technology. There are partners. And I think what you need from a technology perspective is good partners that understand the domain to really figure out with you how to actually you know, innovate. And finding partners that actually have done this day in, day out. Uh, that has helped publishers across the world is the right thing. So in, from an innovation standpoint, I think it's really, really important to find the partner. And we believe that, you know, we are, you know, we've helped so many companies and we also want to come into Malaysia and some of the markets here. And we believe we can't do it alone um, because we're across the world, we need local support. And one of the things that we're doing is actually uh, partnering with Keith for helping local publishers figure this out because this journey is not a journey that's going to you know, start and just end. It's a long journey. It's small, small steps. And uh, you know, we will take the steps with you at UBS to actually uh, you know, help you transform to whatever you are going to be, but help you figure out how to make that content from a digital perspective, how do we commercialize it as much as you can and give you examples like I've given you so far. And I think we, over the years, we've invested millions of dollars into our iPublish Central platform. Uh, and really our platform is so flexible. But the beauty thing about this is it's a software as a service solution. It doesn't cost an arm and a leg. It is very, we have different types of business models to make sure that it, you can get on and actually have that strategy, at least initiate a strategy. So, you know, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, it was a quick uh, overview of, you know, transformation. Some of it might have been a little uh, too uh, detailed. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think uh, if you have any questions afterwards, uh, we'll be here for questions. And, uh, you know, like I said, uh, I think uh, digital is here to stay. It's going to be uh, there you know, in the future. We need to be where consumers are. Uh, uh, we, we talked about reading being less and less, but if we can create products uh, where consumers are, uh, then you will have, uh, you know, you will have a bright future. So, thank you very much for your time.